Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by former world title challenger, Mr. Jordan Thompson. How are you doing, mate? I'm not bad, thank you, Josh. Hope you're well, my man. Thanks for having me on as well, brother. Uh, thank you very much. Very well, myself. Um, exciting times for you with big moves moving up to heavyweight. We know yeah. that was announced after your last fight against Jaya Pattaya. How are we how are we getting on with the training and have we got any any big news on the horizon? Yeah, man, there's a, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Obviously, the, everyone knew the move the move up to heavy. It was inevitable. To be honest, though, I will, I, I'm not completely written off the bridge weight thing yet. I'm just waiting for a few things to unfold on the scene at the minute. There's a couple of interesting fights coming up, so I've got my eye on that. But heavyweight is the uh, is the that's the destination where I'd like to end up. I mean, that's where the big fights are at. That's where the big money's at. So it, it definitely makes more sense. Um, and yeah, I think anyone who knows me always knew I was going to end up a heavyweight, but it was just a, a matter of time. But now I'm on the heavyweight scene. It's, it's thriving right now as well, as, as you said. So I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, as well, after my last fight, building a new team at the minute as well. So having a lot of talks and whatnot here, there and everywhere, just trying to, trying to get a new trainer, new management team and everything. So yeah, it's busy times, busy times, but it's going well. No complaints from me. Um, just trying to build that circle around me and, and make sure that we're all working towards the, the same plan, the same goal and, and make sure we all stand on business when it's when it's time to stand on business. So nah, it's looking good, though. It's looking good. Definitely no complaints. Now a few months have passed since the loss to Jaya Pattaya. How do you reflect on it? Yeah, man, listen, it was, um, it was a blessing in disguise, a blessing in disguise, um, a definitely a massive um, learning opportunity. And, and you know I'm one of them. Like I'm, I'm still learning in the game. I'm learning. I'm, I'm genuinely learning on the job. I had very, very little experience coming into the game. Bit of a late starter, as everyone likes to say, you know. So the way I put it, I had a tennis racket in my hand not too long ago. Somehow stumbled upon a world title shot at cruiserweight. So I think I think I've done pretty damn well considering. But again, man, that fight itself, um, just a massive learning experience. And and a lot of people say, oh, "What did you learn from the fight?" And I'll be honest. In the ring, I didn't really learn a lot. It was more before the fight and after the fight. I'd say that's where the the majority of my learning came from. Um, just in this in this game that we call boxing, it's a it's an interesting one. Um, but no, again, valuable lessons inside and outside the ring. Um, so yeah, man, I've got I've got nothing but positives to take from it. To be fair, yeah, I was disappointed for a, for a week or so. I was I was I was very disappointed. I'm a winner at heart. I'm a winner to to the day I die, man. So. Yeah, the the loss it was it was tough to handle, but at the end of the day, it's it's the cliche saying it's not really a loss, it's a lesson. But it's only a lesson if you if you if you're willing to learn from it and you do learn from it. So it's just about me moving forward now, making sure that I get all those little things sorted that I could have done better and I could have got right. Making sure all of those are corrected moving forward, and then um, the world's my oyster, man. Still positive, still believe I'm the best fighter in the world. So yeah. The amount of praise that Jaya Pattaya got after that performance and after the perform the following performance against Elisora, people calling him an absolute killer at that cruiserweight level and saying that if he was to step up to heavyweight, he would jump straight into that world title mix. The fact that you've been able to share the ring with him, share a fight week with him, must give you confidence going on to the rest of your career and what follows. Definitely. That's what I mean. Like it's invaluable experience to be to be even to be in and around a world title fight, it's an amazing experience. But to be part of a world title fight, the whole build up and the fight itself and the aftermath, like these are all things that you, an experience that you can't really you can't really buy. You know what I'm trying to say? You can only really learn from them and experience them in the thick of it. Um so again, that's something that I definitely added to my CV and um, something that I've definitely learned from and something that I'm definitely thriving for, thriving from at the minute. Um so I'm just keen to make sure I learn from him, keep it moving forward as positive as I can and, and just get some build up that momentum again because as we know my like momentum's a massive thing in boxing. So as long as I can get that get that ball rolling again, that there'll be no stopping me for sure. Regarding that defeat, I know Ben Chalon made some comments on on Talk Sport the other day regarding the the level that you'd fought at when you were thrown in, as he put it, into that against Jai Patai saying you hadn't even fought at English level. I mean, what were you thinking when you heard that? Uh, do you know what? It was a bit of a mad one. It was a bit of a mad one because I, I don't mind Ben. I don't mind Ben Shalom. I actually think you know what? New kid on the block. He's good for the game. He's he's doing his thing. He's doing his best. 
Um, not made a lot of friends, I'd, I'd say, but it's a, it's a tough business to make friends in. I will be honest. It's a tough business to make friends in, but he's doing a good thing, man. So when I, when I heard that, I was a bit like, damn. I was like, Have you ever seen a meme on online on Instagram where 50 Cent and he's like, what do you say fuck me for? I was that that was my reaction. I was like, what do you say fuck me for? Like, I didn't know I'd done anything wrong to him, but I thought I'd just catch a bit, I caught, I caught a bit of a stray bullet there in the little back and forth that he's obviously got going on with Eddie. But the way I saw it, I was like, at the end of the day, you can think of it however you want to think of it, but only I know how I take in the experience on. And listen, I'm, I can't, you can't say I got thrown in. I said, let's be honest, they worked their way down the list. No one really wanted the fight. I was, I was the next in line. I took the fight. Went in there, yeah, got my ass handed to me, but I gained some value, valuable, valuable experience from it. So I'm grateful for that. It was a world title shot. Not a lot of people can say they've been involved in a world title shot. No, didn't really go to plan, but I wasn't, I weren't really bothered too much about the the stuff you said before. And the thing I was more annoyed by was the English level thing. I was thinking, but if, if we're breaking it down, apart from the fact some there's no way you can consider me English level, no matter what you say or what you I'm not I'm not bothered in it. That's just not the way I was I would describe myself. But the fight before the Jaya Pataya fight, I fought Luke Watkins. Luke Watkins, to take my fight, had to vacate the English title, which he won in six rounds, to take my fight. So he just dropped the English title on a pretty bang average performance from myself. I blew him out of there in six rounds. I'm just like, come on, Ben. English level. I was like, he didn't even like say, oh, he's not even British level, which I'd have still took offence to. But English level, I was just like, and that's no disrespect to anyone English level. I just believe I'm, I'm, I was far, I'm far past that, and I still do. Um, but yeah, again, man, it was just a, a, a stray bullet, a stray bullet, and a little bit of a back and forth between between two promoters. It's, it's good, it's, it's, it's good for the game. Honestly, it was good to see my name mentioned again as well, because you know, like it, it, this sport, man, it can go a little bit quiet after you, you you take a loss. So it was good to see my name mentioned. And nah, listen, man, no hard feelings either. No hard feelings. Still think he, listen, he's doing his thing. I hope, wish him all the best. He had a great fight on the the weekend before as well with um, Fabio and Fraser. So listen, man, I mean, just no more stray bullets, please. And then, yeah, we're good. <laughs> you mentioned Fabio and Fraser there. We'll, we'll, we'll go down as a, a fight of the year contender. Possibly we'll go down as, as fight of the year. Incredible fight. What did you make of it and how did you score it? Yeah, do you know what? It was, it was an exciting fight. It was an exciting fight to watch as a fan. Like, it was non-stop action. It was back and forth. I think there was a lot of pressure on, on um, Fraser. A lot of pressure on Fraser. He had the whole amateur pedigree. Yeah, as he as he said in the little face to face, that he's got he's got amateurs hitting him up saying, you know, "Listen, the the amateur reputations on the line here, kind of thing." So there was a lot of pressure for him, a lot of pressure for him. But I think as I as I was a little bit suspicious of and aware of, I thought he'll be able to handle that pressure because of his vast experience. So I thought he's not really gonna let the let the lights get to him or let the occasion get to him. He's been there. He's done it. Obviously not in a professional ring, but he's travelled the world, man. He's gained some some crazy experience on that amateur circuit at an elite level as well, fighting and being in a ring with some of the best operators that um that you can really come across. And then obviously you got Fabio as well, man. And I'm a, I'm actually a, a bit of a fan of Fabio, like just for the, the pure fact he's come from the unlicensed scene, and he's he's out there right now with the heavyweight world that is at his feet, man. Like he's he's doing a hell of a job. So hats off to Fabio, hats off to Fraser. They both put on an amazing fight. Me personally, I, I, a draw was kind of a draw was a fair result. A draw was a fair result. I think it was pretty even pickings throughout the fight. But I will say, if it, if I would have had to give it to anyone, I would have actually given it to Fabio just off the fact that the knockdown and the point taken off for Fraser, I was a bit like surely that would have swayed it towards Fabio. Um, but I don't think it's a fight anyone would mind wouldn't mind seeing again. So I get the draw. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and I can't wait to watch the next fight. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think that's a, a rematch we all can't wait to see. Um, 100%. Going from the British heavyweight title to the British cruiserweight title, there's a bit of a situation emerging there now. Chev yeah. Clark's been mandatory for a number of months now. Isaac Chambers mm -hmm. obviously vacated that title to follow the European title dream. It's mm -hmm. a situation where Ben Shalom's taking a little bit of 
grief and a bit of criticism. How do you view it from the outside? I don't know, man. The bit, you see, one thing I promised myself, especially like during and after my last fight, I was like, you see the business of boxing? I'm going to leave that alone. Like, I don't want to understand the business of boxing. I'm not going to try and understand the business of boxing. I've got no place knowing the business of boxing. I believe that's where you should build a, a very good and tight team around yourself who, who handle that side of things. Um, to me, from the outside looking in, I just, again, man, it's just politics. Politics in boxing. Um, fighters wanting to do their own thing. I think it was um, announced yesterday that Isaac vacated. Did he vacate the British? Yeah, so he's yeah. vacated now to obviously um to go after the EBU title. Which honestly, it, it that that actually makes sense. It makes sense to me. I just think they um they <laughs> they might have left it a little bit too late um to announce that. Obviously, as well, I saw it was I think Mick Hennessy is actually the one who's looking after Isaac. So I think it was actually his decision. Um. So yeah, man. I mean, again, it can look like one thing, but be another. It's all it's all how you perceive it and how you perceive the the game. But I mean, there's some still some great fights, man. The cruiserweight division still a crazy, a crazy, crazy division. So there's a lot of good fights that we'll all be tuning in to watch. Um, but yeah, it looks from the outside looking in, it looks like no one really wants to to fight um Chev. So I'm not sure, man. Hopefully those fights can get made though, because again, for the British public and the British fans, they're amazing fights. So hopefully they get the they get the TV time to be able to be put on. Before we talk about a couple of the big boys in the heavyweight division, you mentioned about Bridgeway earlier. Lawrence mm. Coley is obviously going to be challenging for the Bridgeway world title against Lucas Rosansky. Was that a little bit of a surprise when you saw that one pop up? Yeah, it was definitely a surprise because no one's here really heard anything about about Lawrence for a little while. Um, especially after the the fight he had with Chris William Smith, it was we were all waiting for a rematch, and obviously Riyad Paul came in, and now he's got that opportunity to fight um Chris William Smith. So everyone was a bit like, well, what's Akoli doing? So everyone's kind of waiting for 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 what's what's next with with Akoli, and um obviously he made the move to to Manchester as well to Joe Gallagher. So I think when he made that move and that announcement got made, it was like, okay, something's coming. So. But no, listen, that's a great opportunity for him as well, man. He's got on his CV is a former is a former world champion. So that would suggest that yeah, he has got the facilities to walk straight in there for a world title fight at the weight above. Um good fight. Rosansky's no he's no idiot, but at the same time I just think he's a little bit limited in terms of boxing boxing ability. Um and I think Akoli, yeah, I think it'll be a good fight. We'll see what Akoli learns under Joe Gallagher. And then um yeah. A few decisions to be made after that fight, so it'd be interesting. If it is to be bridge weight for yourself, where do you see yourself sort of slotting into that scene? Because it's fairly limited at the moment, isn't it? This is the thing. Like I wouldn't. I'm not trying to campaign at bridge weight. I'll be honest with you. If there's no big fight that can be made straight away, I won't be hanging around at bridge weight. There's nothing really to gain. I think it lacks a little bit of interest um, amongst the the general public. So it's a little bit quiet in in that respect, but. I think heavyweight, heavyweight, that's where all the eyes are on heavyweight. Um every, everyone loves heavyweight boxing. Everyone loves heavyweight boxing. And you and again, you get paid more for it. So if it makes money, it makes sense. So that's the that's the division I'd be more natural at as well. So I think that's where my that's where my energy is kind of going towards right now. Are you fully back in gym now? Have you got anything to actually aim for at the moment? Yeah, I'm not fully fully back in gym. I mean, I'm fully training, I'm training there enough every day, twice a day. Um but obviously, I'm still. I had surgery on the hand, so I'm still waiting for that to fully recover. Um, I'm just not. I've just not spied yet. That's the only thing I've not really done. Back punching, um, so things are going well. Um, obviously, going to try try out a few trainers and whatnot, and just and just make sure that, again, like I was saying before, they fit they fit into how I would see things. I agree with how they see things, and we can both move in the right direction and 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 achieve the goals that we've that we've set out. So, um, again, no, the injury has been a bit of a blessing as well because there's nothing to be rushed. There's no rash decisions really to be made right now. Um, everything's got to be calculated and, and everyone's got to be um, rowing the boat the same way, as I like to say. What does that process of finding a new training team look like for you? Because we know how important that decision is, especially at the stage you are in your career. You yeah. want to get this right if you want to be moving up those like that ladder. That's the thing. I'll be honest, that the especially like after I've been in this situation a few times to be fair I've had, I've had a good few trainers in the past few years um but I think like this next move for me it's all about what's best for me 
I'm not really looking at anyone else, not really thinking about anyone else. I'm just thinking, all right, what's what's the best move for me? What is gonna help me move in the right direction, which I believe that I should be moving to. Um, and again, just building a relationship with that trainer, um, making sure we gel properly, um, not just not just rushing into a, again making a rash decision. Um, I think it's gotta be gotta be fitting with and resonating with how I see things. And again. I've got to resonate with how they see things. Um, so again, yeah, that's just the most important thing for me at the minute. Trust, loyalty with the trainer. It, it would be um, it would be a special thing. And again, like you said, I'm 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 wanting the next move, and the next move will be my last move. So it's definitely not something I'm I'm going to rush into. It's something that I'm going to have to take my time and really make sure that it's the right thing for me. The final thing to discuss with yourself, Tyson Fury. We saw. Yesterday, there was sort of a, a last minute press conference called up in Morgan. Yeah. It was only a number of hours before actually the press conference was due to take place. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of people on social media speculating as to what that could be about. Hopefully, yeah. be a postponement yeah. or anything. Uh, I imagine. Not. I mean, what, what, my... when you saw that was that was popped up, what were you thinking? I was just, I, I kind of, I mean, it would have been an expensive postponement though, because I think from a, 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 a his Excellency Turkey there, he, he kind of said, isn't it, if, if this bit is postponed again, someone's going to have to pay up some some big money. So I think we all knew it was, I think it's just Tyson being Tyson, isn't it? It's, it honestly, I'm not as, as great as I do believe Usyk is um, as a fighter and as a person. It's the Tyson Fury show. If there's a fight with Tyson Fury involved, it is the Tyson Fury show. Um, I think it was a special press conference, so it was good, entertaining. He was on, he was on top form as always. I think the, the first round... <laughs> The first round knockout by Tyson's free money, if you ask me. But no, nah, man, he, he just brings um he brings a good a good little edge to the game, man. He's just himself, isn't he? Um, and he's he's got a good a good charisma about him, an amazing backstory as well. So I think he'll always have the people's hearts, the fans' hearts. But now nah, he's doing a great thing, man. I think it's going to be in a massive, massive event. Like he, he mentioned, he's quite the historian as well. Um, but like he mentioned, like it's the first undisputed heavyweight fight we're going to have saw for absolute years so it's going to be special there's going to be all eyes on that fight and, I'm, and I, I don't doubt for one second it's going to be a very very great fight um he did he did allude to it not being a really a fun friendly fight but I think whenever two great heavyweights get in the ring and put all the belts on the line you only promised a great fight so I'm looking forward to it definitely what does Usyk have to do in that ring to give himself a chance of winning that fight in your opinion well, I don't. If I feel if, honestly, if there's one person who I who I do believe will not buy into the whole mind games, it's Alexander Usyk. The, the man's just stone cold, like he's stone cold. Um, so I do think it's all going to come down to what happens on the night in the ring. I don't think none of the before and after stuff is going to really have played a part. Um, even though Tyson is the best at mind games, I think he's up there against probably one of the coldest calmest, coolest guys in the game. So that's an interesting little build-up right there. But I think on the night in the ring, I mean, Usyk, man, he's a classy, classy operator. Very smart, very experienced, um, very content in what he has to do when he gets in that ring. So I think he's just got to stick to his guns. I don't really think he's got to do anything anything different, but I do believe he might, he might have to be able to adapt to how Tyson approaches the fight. Because I think if there's anyone who's going to, really like change anything that they do it might be Tyson Fury he's a very adaptable individual Tyson so he can really pull out whatever he needs to pull out to get the job done on the night I think that's one of his biggest strengths um, especially for someone of that size as well like he can he can apply various different styles in order to win a fight we've seen it in the past look at the the rematch he had with Wilder the second fight he was all back foot hit and not get hit next minute he's, he's walking forward bombing people out of there so it's just like, which Tyson are we going to get? How is he going to approach the fight? And then I think Usyk's going to have to adapt and, and make a move from there. But it's a, it's a great matchup. I do think we will get a little bit of a chess match, a violent chess match nonetheless, but it will be a, it will be an interesting spectacle. Now, Jordan, it's a real pleasure catching up and uh, I look forward to catching up again once you've got a trainer in place and once we've got some fight news, mate. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it, Josh, man. Thanks for having me on, mate. Thank you.